Hi everybody, it's great to be back here again on Itamar. It's Friday and let us get to work. We have a lot of Torah to study today. Um, just one good news, it is raining. Let it continue raining. Be'ezat Hashem. Um, I'd like to talk about, of course, we'll be getting a new book, the book of Exodus, the book of Shemot. And there's a beautiful Gemara in Bava Batra. The Bava Batra is the Talmud, you know, one of the tractates of the Talmud. And the Gemara talks about Moshe Rabbeinu, he wrote three books. Moshe Rabbeinu wrote his book, which is the Torah, of course, Parshat Bilam, the portion of Bilam, and the book of Eov. The book of Eov. What I want to try to do now is, I read this week um, when I was teaching a lesson with my boys, um, I came across a beautiful article, an essay written by Rav, Dov, Rav Yosef Dov Salvechik, who was known as the Greed, he was the, he was the um, Rosh Yeshiva in the famous Yeshiva University for many, many years. And I think for 40 years. Big, big, tremendous scholars we know um, wrote a lot about Jewish philosophy and as well. Not only his amazing scholarly knowledge of Jewish law and, of course, the Talmud and every area of Torah we know. But anyway, this week I came across, he has a beautiful, beautiful... Um, article called Kol Dodi Dofek, the voice of my uncle, which always represents God, is Dofek. God is calling to us. That's the name of the, um, his article, and he writes in this article, he writes about Eov, and it is sort of connected so well to this week's portion, so I thought I'd bring his um, some insights, what he wrote over here, and try to connect it to um, this week's portion, uh, which I think there's, def there's a definite connection. And before I actually bring down what he says, I want to discuss a little bit about, again, the Gemara of Bacha, which talks about Moshe Rabbeinu again, and what he wrote, the different um, books that Moshe Rabbeinu wrote. And it goes on to dis ask a question of Eov. Who is Eov, really? <laughs> Moshe Rabbeinu wrote the book, but who, who's he writing about? And then the Gemara goes on to say, to a discourse, it could be Eov, could he be in the times of Isaac, and the times of Jacob? And times of Joseph, and goes on, different opinions. Some people say evil lived in the time of um, Achashverosh. Wow, there are so many different opinions. Who was this Eov? Some say Eov was a, a prophet of the, of the Gentile world. It's an opinion. And there's also one actual opinion that says Eov lo hayava lo nivra. Never existed. But Eov was really a parable, a mashal, to teach us the whole a lesson on understanding suffering. But really, it was never really one person. Um, and I think this is very interesting. The Talmud has such an interesting discourse and how and to try to figure out what generation he's from could actually reflect on this opinion that he really wasn't existed at all, trying to show that every generation there's an Eov. There's a someone who represents the suffering and who's, who's been through a lot and tries to teach us an important lesson of suffering in the world in every generation. That's possible of course, an explanation, of course. Although the Gemara goes on to say that um, that Eov, well, there's the Midrashim say, and of course, this define Eov as someone who did exist. There are very, again, very, very different opinions. And there's another Midrash in the Rabbah which says that Eov was one of the actual um, servants of Paro. He was one of the, one of the advisors. Uh, Paro had three advisors, and he was one of those advisors. So, wow, it's a huge Migvan. Migvan is a huge. Um, diversity of opinions about who this Eov was all about. And I think it's very, very, um, well, this beautiful article I read in the Rav Salvechik is very, connects very well to the portion. And he talks about suffering. And we spoke about that before. Eov, we know the, the basic story of Eov, of course, a person who had it all, very, very, he had a beautiful family, beautiful children, very, very wealthy, extremely wealthy. And he lost it all. Everyone was killed, everyone, um, he lost all his wealth, and all his family died out. And he went physical, terrible physical um, yisurim, suffering, terrible physical suffering he had to go through. And then at the end, of course, a happy ending with the, the book of Eov. The question is, again, what is the wisest among our prophets, and what, what is the important message that we can learn from Eov? One of the questions that we people have, and this is something we could talk about for many, many lessons, is to understand suffering in this world. There are so many people that are ill, there are so many people that have terrible health issues, there are so many people who have terrible financial issues. There are so many people who have 
on a personal scale, suffering that we can't imagine. And we, everyone says, you know, okay, let's thank Hashem. What we have in our place, we don't want to look at the others with their difficult sufferings. And and that's one of the hardest things to understand. One of the hardest, hardest things to understand. Um, and Eov, after he went through this terrible thing, as we know, the whole discourse that took place to try to understand, and through learning his book of Eov, we can really maybe try to find a little bit insight into the world, the understanding suffering, which exists in every generation. Every generation is an Eov, and there are many Eovs in any generation. But what was this whole lesson? Uh, Yosef Dov brings down, it again, a beautiful essay, and I'd like to read, try to explain a little bit of this. We'll see how this will be. I don't want it to be a monotone, but I want it to actually, it's in Hebrew, not to translate as I read, but let's try to get to it. And he says, he brings down by saying, This is the answer that God gave to Eov. Eov, of course, is Jove in English, but I didn't say it, I think it's Jove. Kol zman she'eov itpalsef. Ke'evet ha'goral. As long as Eov was philosophizing, he wanted to know the reasoning and he wanted to know the, the mahut hara, the, the source of evil, or the, the understanding evil. And he was asking all the time and he was saying, Madua Vilama Why are there terrible, terrible Yisurim, tragedy, difficulty, suffering come upon people? And God says to him, Hayedata. Hayedata means in Hebrew, do you know? And what does God say, Hayedata? And he says, do you know how the time that the, the animals, the ibexes in the, in the, de- in the um, desert give birth? And he answered a couple different questions. He's trying to say, you don't know the simplest things about creation. Look how deep, and we all know how deep the cosmos is in every year more and more discoveries and how things are so beyond our understanding. And you want to know, understand God's ways of the world, understand the suffering in this world? If you don't know the Aleph Bet, the ABC of creation, how could you have the audacity to ask all kinds of questions about how I run my world? So this is a discourse between God and, e- and Eov. But when Eov understood how strange his question was and how foolish he was almost. He admitted. And then he said, I really didn't understand God's ways. And at that moment, Gila Kadosh Baruch Ish Hayehud at the Yesod Amiti at Safun Bisulam. And God revealed him at that point what is the deep secret behind suffering. God said to Eov, You'll never know why. But you must know. How can we rectify the Yisurim? If you could buy these terrible sufferings, lift yourself up to a higher level than you knew before. You should know that they serve as a means to rectify our soul and our body. Eov, when you had a tremendous amount of blessing, of chesed, love and kindness come upon you, You were a tremendous known person in the world. You were a man of influence. But you did not fulfill your purpose of the kindness that you had. You did not fulfill your purpose. In other words, God was telling you, you had tremendous amounts of money, tremendous amount of blessing. But you did not, when you had all those wonderful benefits, you had the opportunity to do what you could have done. You didn't do it. You were, each time you were a simple man sitting and a straight person. Right? You were a moral person. Fearing God. You didn't follow evil. You didn't use your strength 
and your wealth to do evil, of course. You gave a lot of charity, maybe. You didn't prevent yourself, of course, from trying to help, in a certain way, poor people. It's an amazing kind of thing he's saying here. And he goes on to say, Ulam chasralacha midata chesed agdola b'shnei muvanim. But there was a flaw in your kindness in two ways. And what was the kindness he's trying to say? There was a flaw in Eov's kindness, in his chesed, in two ways. One, never lo nasata be'ol ha'tzibur lo shatafta b'tzarato v'yigono. You didn't, something in Hebrew, it says, so be, it's so beautiful in Hebrew, la seid be'ol ha'tzibur. What does that mean in Hebrew? In Hebrew means, when there's the tzibur, the, the um, congregation. Tzibur is like when someone has a congregation, or community, the people, the land. The tzibur is the masses. Of course, there are many different levels of tzibur, yut, but he says to you, you weren't a person that was involved with the masses enough. You didn't feel, you didn't feel his pain. You also didn't understand the suffering of the individual. You had so much money. You were lacking nothing. You did give, you might have given some donations here and there. But the kindness, what does it mean love and kindness? It's much greater than the, this, the certain feeling that just, what is it worth? Kindness is much more than a tear that passes by. The person could cry, okay, feel a certain pain, and it's over. What is, what is real, what is real, I said kindness, is when you completely feel the pain of the, your neighbor, completely identifying with his pain. This goes on, of course, it's not an easy thing to translate them uh, in Hebrew or immediately to English, and at the same time try to, of course, um, make the world, make it a little concise, but I'd like to summarize what, some things he said over here. Well, Yosef Dov says something a beautiful lesson. He's saying the whole thing of Eov really was that he didn't, he wasn't enough involved with the many. He was a personal, as we say in Hebrew, so it's the beautiful words of parati the klali, individual and klali general. There are many people in their lives, they're very righteous in their own personal ways. But it does their righteousness do not leave their family and their, the four corners of their home. As a person rises in his greatness, he wants to be more involved in helping others and expanding his, his net out and feeling for others and seeing where others have to be rectified and seeing how to help others in many, many ways. You know, a person could do a certain righteous acts from here and there, and he did, he did many of those righteous acts. Obviously, he was, a, he was a righteous person. You know, many people, you know, as we say, to be on his level of evil was a tremendous level. But God was say, saying it wasn't enough. Because you were, again, you were maintaining this, this, this um, righteousness really to your family and to your closed circle, but not really looking out, looking out how you could reach out to the many, to the masses, and reach out to the world that needs you so much. He was sitting aside when people really suffer. He didn't identify enough with the suffering of others. And then he had to go through this terrible suffering of his own to try to understand that, and he made a big close change around. This is amazing that this is how, how is this connected to the sixth portion? Well, we know that he was one of the advisors of Paul. And I, it could, on one level, of course, he mentioned before that there are other opinions, of course, but we think, if we take the opinion that he was an advisor of Paul, living at that time, what did he see? He was witnessing the terrible, terrible atrocities that the Egyptians were doing to the Jewish people. He might have here and there did, did certain things to try to help, but obviously he did not identify with the pain and the anguish that the Jewish people were going through. The suffering and the throwing into the, the Nile, the firstborn. I mean, sometimes we don't realize, we just read about it like, we don't realize what we're reading. Taking a little baby, a little beautiful baby, and throwing it to the Nile. That's what they did. 
These were Nazis. As a matter of fact, if we read, when we go through the verses, that's a whole thing in itself, to see how it is an exact parallel to the way the Egyptians worked, the Nazis did everything in that same parallel way. If you really learn the verses in a deep meaning, this is for maybe another lesson for, for maybe some other time we go through this portion next year. We'll talk about how, or maybe next week, we'll talk about how how this is parallel to what the Nazis did in Germany to the Jewish people. And here Eov, who lived in a time like that and saw the suffering of so many, could have made a difference. He could have gotten out of his personal shell and helped others and stopped this madness. And that is where his suffering came from afterwards. Because although, again, he was righteous, but he could have done more. He didn't do enough. But on the other hand, the beauty of a leader, Moshe Rabbein, Moses, if we read about this week's portion, we read about this week's portion, how he was born, and again, the miracle story of how he could have been killed. And this is just the person, his personal survivor, as a survivor, and have been himself been through a situation. And then him, him growing up in this house of Paro, this amazing house of wealth and everything there. He could have, he could have been a prince and just shut up. But no, he didn't remain in his house like Eov did. He got up. And he went out to his brothers. And he saw their terrible affliction they're going through and their suffering. And he identified with the pain. And he, went, he would not sit with a hand with one hand on the other, with leg over leg. He went out to try to help and be part of his brothers. And he saw how everything about this personality of Moshe Rabbeinu was a complete giver nothing for himself. His whole life was devoted to the nation. As we say, to the masses, to help the nation. He wasn't in a closed room in his house and not worrying about what goes on outside his doors. Although he could have easily done that. He could have easily sat there in that palace and just enjoyed his life with every luxury and every benefit a prince has, all that money he has. But he did not do it. He went out and he worked so hard trying to make a change. He endangered his life, of course. He had to run away. And until he became, of course, he was chosen by Hashem because of his greatness, because of him giving over himself completely and not at all worrying about his personal gain in any way. He, was, he merited in being, again, the leader of Israel, to be the one to bring Torah to Israel and to bring Israel out of Egypt in this terrible affliction. This lesson is so important for all of us. You know, we can pass our lives, they go by so quickly, days go by, and months go by, and hours go by, and minutes go by. And we are so involved in ourselves, in our personal selves. We get up in the morning to ask ourselves, what have we done for the nation? Israel needs you. Israel needs you so badly. We're sitting here, a lot of people are scattered about the world. The Jews are all over the place living in a foreign land, building personal lives, building families. But sometimes you got to look and say, we can do all that in the land. The people of Israel have to realize we have a nation. We have to be part of the nation. We can't live a life of separation, separating ourselves from the cloud, from, from Am Yisrael. This is the function of, this is the function of every person, to connect himself with the nation. That's the beauty. When we, when we pray in a minion, why is it so important to daven with ten men in a minion? Why can't we just daven on a personal level in our house? Sometimes you can concentrate even more davening at home and davening in a minion. What is a whole minion? The whole idea of a minion is bringing out, joining ourselves together with the klal, with the nation. This is something very, very um, special about the Jewish nation that we can only function when we work together as a nation. Our vitality and our power comes from our being one nation. When we're scattered about and we're, we're involved in our own personal things. We're weakening the, the very fabric of, our, fabric of our nation. It's so important to unite and be strong and be bounded together. This will bring a blessing to the world, the world out there, the non-Jewish world, is right now searching so hard for the truth. They're looking at Israel all the time for where, where we stand. And sometimes, unfortunately, we're not living up to what we must live up of course, will happen. The Jewish people must reach their destiny, of course, to be a light to the nations. But we have to get, brothers, we got to get our act together over here. 
we must get out together. Living a life of a proti life is a very, 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 very dangerous thing. A person can live a beautiful life, and he may not even feel it. That wonderful livelihood, beautiful family, and it's important as well to raise an important family, to, to follow the Torah way and, and keep the Jewish law, etc., and continue to maintain our heritage, etc. But if we're only involved in our personal selves, what are we? As the verse in Ethics of Our says, the, the famous teaching, what does it say? If I am, if I'm not for myself, who will be for me? If I'm only for myself, what am I? We just have to reach out, and that's our goal. This is the lesson of this portion. It's one of the many thousands of lessons, but this is a, such an important lesson of Eov and his change around. Moshe wrote that book, don't forget of Eov. Moshe Rabbeinu himself wrote this book. This is a lesson he was teaching us about what true leadership is. Every person has to be a leader in his own right. Every person can raise himself up high and to do so much for our people, so much for our nation, we can make a tremendous difference. Shabbat Shalom. I will see you soon. Be'eretz Yisrael. Bye-bye.